Hello, I am Zarkoon and this is World of Warships Legends. Today I've got a special video for you today, and this video is going to be a giveaway. I have a number of codes that Wargaming gave me to give out to people, and these codes are redeemable for one secret Santa container and one super Santa container. If you want to enter the giveaway, all you need to do is post a comment on this video. And that comment needs to contain one of two things. Either your name on Discord, so I can direct message you the code, or an email address that I can send the code to. I will use a YouTube bot to randomly pick 10 winners from the comment section on this video and send out the codes. And I will do that on, I believe, Tuesday this week, so in two days. So you've got two days to post your comments on this video and hopefully win one of those codes. For the rest of this video, I want to talk about the Tier 7 USN Tech Tree Battleship Kansas, which is, in my opinion, a somewhat mediocre ship. At least it was. It has been buffed, though, for this update, and we'll talk about this buff. This game actually occurred on the stream I played on the day the update dropped, and this was the very first game I played in the USS Kansas. And with this shot here, against the broadside of a Grosseker first, I instantly thought, okay, there's something a little bit different about this ship. Now, when Wargaming sends the community contributors the patch notes, oftentimes those patch notes that we get sent are a rough draft, and they don't contain everything that is actually going to be in the final version of the patch notes. So the patch notes I received told me that the USS Kansas had its main battery reload buffed from 38 seconds to 34 seconds. And that's true, but that really doesn't explain the two citadels that we just landed on the enemy Kansas out there, or the 21,000 damage salvo that we landed on the Gross Occur first. Prior to this buff, I do not think the Kansas was this accurate, and that tends to be the way it goes with battleships with large numbers of guns. The Kansas has 12 16-inch guns, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there is not another battleship at Tier 7 with 12 guns. Certainly, there's not another battleship at Tier 7 with 12 16-inch guns. That's a lot of broadside firepower, okay? You've got to go to the Legendary tier to find anything comparable with the Grosseker first, the Conqueror, or the Montana all of which I do believe have 12 guns of the 16-inch caliber, or maybe slightly larger in the case of the Gross Occur first. And typically, if you're gonna take a ship and give it that kind of firepower at not the highest tier in the game, then you're going to balance it by making the shells not super accurate. And that, I think, was the story of the Kansas prior to this buff. But I've heard from members of the community that community manager Prince Blip confirmed that not only did the Kansas receive a reload buff that we've already discussed, but it also received an accuracy buff. And that adds up to making it, I think, a much stronger ship than it was previously. Of course, the Kansas does still have its problems, even though its guns, at least in my opinion, are decidedly better than they were before. We're up to 69,000 damage now, and some of the shots we get in this game are just gonna be brutal. And that's the kind of thing I wanted to see from the Kansas with all this firepower. Because the downsides of this ship at Tier 7 are numerous, and they are still downsides even after the buff. Let's talk about those. First up, of course, this ship is thick, as they say. It's got thick, curvy sides, you know? And some people like that kind of thing. Some people don't. But 
all of that extra, let's call it girth, weighs the ship down. So it doesn't have a very high top speed. I think it's only got a top speed of around 27 knots, which may very well make it the slowest battleship at Tier 7. So there's that. Of course, as a trade-off, the turning circle on this ship is pretty tight for a battleship, and so long as you can preemptively anticipate them, you can use that nice maneuverability to dodge a number of torpedoes. And that is the same story with the Dreadnought-style American battleships all up and down the line that precede the Kansas. So there's that. But also the armor on the Kansas is not exactly the best armor for a battleship in the game. It's a lot like the French armor in the sense that the Kansas is coated in 32 millimeters of plating everywhere along its thick hull. I think it might have thicker deck armor. It might have 38 millimeter deck armor amidships under the superstructure, but then it also does have the massive superstructure. 32 millimeters of armor is a weak armor scheme on a high tier battleship. Why? Well, because, of course, the Yamato can overmatch 32 millimeters of armor, but that really isn't why. There's also the issue of high explosive spam, which is quite prevalent in this game, and fire damage and high explosive damage, when it's concentrated and focused on you, can be devastating. Any cruiser with 203 millimeter guns can penetrate the Kansas's 32 millimeter armor plating with its high explosive, not to mention light fires. And then any light cruiser with 152 millimeter guns that is running the equilibrium of power skill or is German can penetrate the 32 millimeters of armor as well. In fact, I think the German light cruisers can probably penetrate the deck armor if it is indeed 38 millimeters. Maybe they can't quite pen 38. I can't exactly remember the number, but this thing will eat high explosive spam like nobody's business if it finds itself under HE spam in concentrated do doses. Also, the thick sides, as you can see, extend pretty high above the waterline. There's a lot of freeboard there, which means there's a lot of real estate for large caliber battleship shells to catch this thing in the side and do massive chunk damage to it, even if they don't strike the Citadel. Thus, the Kansas is now a very good, let's call it, artillery battery, right? With all of its guns, but it is on a subpar artillery platform. So, in order to play it effectively, you can't really push in. You certainly can't push in when the enemy numbers are thick. And if you do try to push in and try to angle, well, when you're closer to enemy battleships, like I said, there's all that freeboard, and there are some various surfaces along the side of the ship that just act as shell catchers. I mean, you can see the square sort of platform where one of the secondary mounts is right in the center of the ship, and you can see how in front of and behind that secondary mount it's flat plating. Well, that's a shell catch. That's one of the shell catches, and those kind of things... Obviously, they catch shells. Holy crap. See that there? That devastating strike against the enemy Kansas? That's a viewer of the channel. Wolfie, he calls himself. I apologize for that deletion there. That must have hurt. But, of course, if it makes Wolfie feel, feel any better, um, my team is not exactly in a great position to win this game. We'll get to that in a second. What was I saying, though? Ah, yes. The Kansas. It is a subpar artillery platform, although now, after the buff, the artillery itself is a heck of a lot better. And, frankly, I think this ship is in a better state than it was before this buff, and I like it a little bit more. I think it's more effective, and I think I might find myself playing it a little bit more often. I tend to enjoy battleships a lot when their guns can consistently hit things, 
and when they can consistently do damage. That's sort of what you want to look for in a battleship, right? I mean, the German battleships, you know, they're not accurate. They can be kind of fun, but really, ultimately, what you're looking for is something that can deliver consistent powerhouse hits when you play a battleship. And that is why a lot of people like the American battleships in particular. And I think maybe people who did not enjoy the Kansas at first brush might want to take the ship out again and see how they feel about it after the buff. After all, this was my first game in the Kansas post-buff, and you can see we're up to 171,000 damage, which, honestly, I think is more damage than I have ever done in the Kansas. So, this is probably my damage record in this ship. The unfortunate thing is... I'm really not sure what my team was doing throughout the entire course of the game. As you can see, all of them are dead now, and that just leaves me, a lone, slow, thick battleship, versus two enemy destroyers who, by the way, have held a two-cap advantage for a long time in this game. And, well, I'm trying to give my team that advantage. There are four minutes left. The Khabarovsk decides to open fire on me, which, understandable, but I've got the high explosive loaded, and hopefully we're going to be able to take out this Khabarovsk. He's trying to dodge a little bit, deploying a smoke screen, and, well, going in a straight line makes it easy for me to hit him. We get another fire, we're able to take that Khabarovsk out. That just leaves the Shimakaze. But here, in the kerfluffle, or whatever that word is, that just occurred between me getting shot by the Kabarosk and the Shimakaze, I sailed out of the cap circle and was not able to take it. I was anticipating Shimakaze torpedoes coming at me from that direction, so I wanted to change my course radically in order to avoid any of these torpedoes. I don't think the Kansas has the best torpedo protection known to mankind, but even if it does have semi-decent torpedo protection, the torpedoes launched by these high-tier Japanese torpedo boats are basically underwater nuclear missiles that do a devastating amount of damage per torpedo hit, no matter what they actually do hit. And the Shimakaze has 15 torpedoes. So we've turned away. I think we've sailed away from the sector that his torpedoes should be coming from, and we're back in the cap now. Even though we don't have it, we're at least contesting it, or rather in the process of capturing it, meaning the enemy is not gaining any points from it. There are the torpedoes directly behind us as the Shimakaze begins to shoot again. I suppose he actually held on to them a little bit, or at least he held on to that set. I assume the rest of them went way over to the right of the screen, and we sailed so far away from them that we never even saw them. The Shimakaze, though, is making a mistake. He really doesn't need to shoot at me at all. There are less than three minutes left to go in this game, and the enemy team is up by 100 points. Even if I take this capture circle, it's not going to be enough to win this game. Had I taken it a few moments earlier instead of sailing out of it, well, then we might have had enough time to build up enough points and overtake the enemy team, but that is not, unfortunately, what happened. 10 seconds away now from taking the cap. Once we get that, we will start to accrue points. We're a little bit less than 100 points behind right now, but still, again, only a minute and 30 seconds left. What we need is for this Shimakaze to attempt to win harder by shooting at our hull. And I don't think he's going to do that. He is not going to oblige us. He's going to take the win and sail off with a nice victory. We sail off with a nice score in terms of damage done, though. 178,000 damage, high caliber, five citadels. I think this demonstrates that the performance of the Kansas post-buff is quite a bit better. Shima reveals himself at the last moment, but frankly, it's too late for us, and he is going to vanish now. He's on the edge of, I believe, his gun range, so... Once he sails out of that gun range, we'll lose sight of him. So it is going to be a loss, unfortunately. 
but I do think it is a pretty good look at the Kansas Post buff. Again, I think if you were kind of cold on this ship when it was first released, maybe give it another try. You might find that you like it just a little bit more. And remember, if you do want to enter the giveaway on this video, be sure to post a comment in the comment section containing either your Discord name or an email address so that if the YouTube bot picks you as a winner, I can send you the code to redeem for your two Santa containers. The game will now end with our sad and unfortunate defeat, but perhaps you will be a winner of one of these crates for this giveaway. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. In any case, if you like the video, <laughs> give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.